As the world transitioned from CRTs to flat panel displays, audio companies no longer felt the need to shield the magnets on their speakers, as flat panel TVs aren't affected by magnetic fields in the same way. In fact, some of the most celebrated, impressively priced speakers available today are all unshielded, leaving CRT enthusiasts with not much to choose from. So I'd like to show some good options for all setups across a bunch of different price ranges. So let's jump right into it. Here's what happens when you put a non-shielded speaker next to a CRT. Watch for the discoloration as the speaker gets closer. That's the speaker's magnetic field affecting the CRT's magnetic field. See, CRTs use an electron gun to fire the image on the back of the glass. In order to do that accurately, thousands of times per second, CRTs create their own magnetic field that guides the electrons to the proper phosphor locations on the glass. Placing a magnet next to the CRT's magnetic field will at least disrupt the image, but can also cause permanent damage, leaving dark spots on the screen. Also, the speaker's magnetic field might have an effect, even if it's not easily noticeable. Check out these speakers. When they're on top, you can clearly see the interference, but alongside, it's barely noticeable. Even in a situation like this where it seems fine, the magnetic field is still there, fighting the one the CRT is creating. This can permanently damage the CRT over long periods of time, so no matter what, keep unshielded speakers or magnets away from your CRT TV. Now, you might think, why can't I just shield my speaker? Why not just wrap some foil around it and ground it? That's shielding, right? I gotta admit, even though I knew this wouldn't work, I was curious to try it, and it accomplished precisely nothing. That's because in order to prevent the magnetic field from affecting the things around it, the shielding needs to be done directly to the speaker's magnet inside the shell. And sure, you could probably cut the speaker open and add your own shielding, but that will definitely change the sound of the speaker, and I'd be willing to bet not for the better. So I realize I totally just skipped all the way through that explanation, and even if I went into a deep dive about how CRTs work and how the magnetic field is generated, the conclusion would still be the exact same. Don't put unshielded speakers or magnets next to your CRT. Maybe someday I'll go back and do a deep dive video on that, because I'm a nerd and that stuff interests me, but for now, let's just skip to the point of this video and get to solutions you could use that are safe next to your CRT. I'd like to start with the cheapest solutions you could find, because I always like to try my best to save you all money whenever possible, and that's just simply some used PC speakers. There's no guarantee they'll be shielded, and you'll obviously want to test them to be sure, as I'm showing here. I think it's worth trying, though, because you could find speakers like these pretty much everywhere used stuff is sold for really low prices. They're not great, but they're a heck of a lot better than the speakers built into a PVM. You don't have to go for bottom-of-the-barrel stuff, though. If you're lucky, you could find some really awesome used computer speakers. Check these out, and yes, I know audiophiles start twitching every time they see the name Bose, but if you find a set in good condition, no one can deny they sound pretty good, and all the ones I've personally tested are shielded. Also, check these things out. They got a little beat up during the four times I moved in the past few years, but don't judge a book by its cover. These old Edirols sound so good and offer every input a retro gamer would want. Connect the digital output from your PS2, the analog output from your older consoles, and heck, maybe even connect the digital coax output from a modded SNES. You're not just limited to PC speakers, of course, but that's more of a gamble. These Cliff speakers are from the 90s, so I thought for sure they'd be shielded, but nope. When it comes to stuff like this, I usually let price decide if it's worth the risk. So, for example, I don't think I'd feel comfortable spending a lot of money on a high-end used speaker system unless I could hear it with my own ears and bring a CRT to make sure it didn't cause any interference at all. However, if the price was cheap enough, I think it would be totally worth it just to see what would happen. For example, I got these pretty cheap along with an old RCA receiver, and they sound fine. I mean, they're not an audiophile's dream speaker, but for the money, I'm not complaining, and most likely, neither would you. I've also found old home theater systems at tag sales super cheap. And for the record, the fact that I've shown three sets of Bose speakers is just a coincidence. Those just happen to be what I found recently. 
I guess all I'm trying to say is I personally approach used audio gear with the worst case scenario in mind. And while sure, it's totally plausible that you'll end up with an awesome deal and a really great setup, how would you feel if you brought home a set of speakers that turned out to be unshielded or were very close to being blown and you didn't realize it when you bought it? With the examples I showed before, I honestly wouldn't be upset at all because they were so cheap I could just use them outside or give them away. But if you don't want to take the risk and worry about a used scenario gone wrong, let's show some inexpensive new solutions you could start out with. I spent a ton of time preparing for this section, and I really tried to hunt down as many magnetically shielded options as I could. I contacted a bunch of manufacturers, all of which didn't really understand what I was talking about at first. I spent so much time combing through spec sheets, and to be honest, I couldn't find that much out there. So this is all going to be a pretty short section. I did find a few things that were reasonably priced that you might be interested in, though. There's a few Klipsch and JBL Studio monitors that have documentation saying they're shielded. I doubt they're an audiophile's first pick, but they're self-powered and should work great with two-channel retro stuff. In fact, these might be the perfect pick for a retro gamer who's just looking for a set of good speakers to put next to their PVM. I found a few surround sound setups that seem to be shielded, but you'll also need to buy an amp. Luckily, you don't have to worry about magnetic shielding when it comes to the amplifier, so if you get a cheap set of 5.1 surround speakers, I would just get the cheapest surround sound receiver you could find. Even used is totally fine, and you really don't have much to worry about. Now, that is not advice I would give if you ever invested money in a good set of speakers, but if you're spending 100 bucks on a 5.1 set, something used that you find at a thrift shop would be more than enough to power those, so any old decently brand receiver would probably be more than good enough for just this scenario. Now, as far as the actual equipment that I found, I'll leave links in the description and I'll keep them updated as I find more, but I do have one very strong piece of advice. Regardless of anything that's listed as magnetically shielded or something that I might test, just buy it from a place that allows returns just in case. Maybe they change their models around and they stop shielding them after a while, who knows. The bottom line is, if you're gonna invest in new gear, even cheap new gear, it's better to just buy from a place where you could return it if you test it and it turns out to not be shielded. And always remember to test it the same way I showed here, just wave them right in front of your CRT. And now I wanna show my favorite new solution for 2.0 setups. And while I would not consider myself a true audiophile, I do have a lot of experience with high-end setups as a previous job landed me at tons of home automation expos where I got myself invited to lots of very high-end speaker demos. I've heard setups that ranged from $5,000 to speakers that were $100,000 each. And what I learned from those experiences is this. When you're planning a new audio setup, listen to things across multiple price points and see where your ears can hear the difference. And I think the best example I could possibly give is one of those demos I was a part of. There was about 10 people in the room and the company started out with their new budget line of 5.1 speakers, budget for high end, it was still over two grand, but everybody in the room thought they were excellent. And then they showed their next line of speakers that were new for that year. And everybody in the room, hands down, felt they were better than the first but those were $15,000 for that set. And I don't think anybody would have agreed that it was worth that much of a price jump. On top of that, that was the company that rolled out the $100,000 a piece speakers. And oh my God, they were amazing. You could hear the vocalist in the music as if they were standing right in front of you. And while that was an experience I'll never forget, it's not worth $200,000 to me. Maybe it's worth it to you, and you could absolutely spend an infinite amount of money on this stuff, and it probably will sound better. But the reason I'm so confident in this recommendation is I don't think you're going to be able to find a combination of amp and speaker for the same price point that really sounds that much better than this one. But first, this is YouTube, so here comes the disclaimers. This is not a sponsored post. I got the amplifier as a gift from a friend, not the company or a reseller, and while I'm a massive fan of the speakers, I paid for those with my own money, and the only affiliation I have with the company is I asked the creator of these speakers for an interview. Hopefully he'll say yes. Anyway, onto the speakers. The Ascend Acoustics CBM-170. These arrived at my house for just under $400, and as you can see, they're completely magnetically shielded. 
I honestly bought them just for that reason, but the recommendation came from Matt from Insurrection Industries, so I suspected I'd like him, because he's got a good ear for this stuff. I connected him to a lower-priced NAD amp, another recommendation from somebody I trust with audio, and I was blown the f*** away. For under $1,000 delivered, I have a setup that sounds much closer to those multi-thousand dollar setups I used to demo. Now, I'm sure speaker placement in the room itself might be a factor, but these sound so good in my setup that I really made this video just to share this combo with you all. Of course, audio is mostly subjective, but much like with experiencing retro games, there are a few things to stay away from. So here's the best example I could give. With retro gaming, there's a million right ways to experience the games. However, you want to stay away from any solution that adds a lot of latency and that tries to deinterlace a progressive scan image because that would result in a lot of screen flicker and after prolonged periods of use, you get eye fatigue from that. It's very similar with audio in that if it sounds good to you, it's probably more than a good enough solution. However, you're definitely going to want to avoid any combination of speakers and amp that pop or crackle when you're listening at a reasonable volume. And you'll also want to avoid any other combo that results in any other type of listener fatigue. Now, I'm not trying to say this is the only combo of amp and speakers you should use with CRTs, and feel free to use anything that sounds good to you. The only point that I'm trying to make is that I seriously doubt you'll be able to find a combination of amp and speakers for this price that sounds significantly better. In fact, I've watched quite a few movies with these, and it rivals my 5.1 ELAC setup connected to my OLED. Of course, the sky's the limit from here. If you want a 5.1 shielded setup, you could always get two more of the CBM 170s and one of their center channel speakers, but make sure to research an amp that'll get the job done. Connecting a cheap amp to really good speakers is a complete waste of money, and at worst could even possibly damage the good speakers. So if you're going to go for that route, I would much rather see people spend their money on one of the slightly less expensive solutions like the pre-powered speakers, or just use some cheap PC speakers and save your money until you get whatever the total solution you're looking for is. Now, I'm not really comfortable giving an amp recommendation because I haven't done the same type of deep dive research that I did with most of the other stuff that I talk about on this channel. So you're going to have to be on your own for this. The only thing I would strongly recommend is make sure you know where you're getting your advice from. The unfortunate truth is there's just a lot of people out there doing reviews that really don't know what they're talking about. I'm trying to avoid being that person right now. So just do your research before spending a bunch of money. Make sure you check with the right places and maybe even reference forums for the speakers that you're looking at to see what other people have paired up as an amp that seems to work well for them. Oh, and if you're someone who considers themselves a true audiophile, give this a read. It's the story behind the latest speakers from the same company that makes the CBM-170s, Ascend Acoustics. They're far more expensive, but if you're a fan of high-end audio, it's at least worth the read. So look, audio is subjective. I'm sure some people are going to be watching this and think I'm completely stupid for wasting time and I should just be using my PVM speaker for all my video games and movies. And you know what? That's totally fine. And on the flip side, I'm sure there's going to be people that take this to the next level and get some absolutely insane fully shielded setup for their CRT viewing, and that's awesome too. The only thing I strongly recommend is just make sure that you test your speakers before putting them next to a CRT. Now, I have definitely seen other videos out there where people use compasses to check for magnetic fields. I only have the one built into my cell phone that just didn't work at all for this. So my gut's telling me that the safest bet is probably to do what I showed here and just fire up an all white screen, move your speaker around it, and if you don't see any discoloration, it should be safe to use. Well, that's it for this time. If you liked this video, please subscribe to this channel and check out everything else we do. Also, if you'd like to help keep these videos and research going, please check out the support page on the main website. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.